Hello, my beautiful diamonds. Sheila True Love here with you. Let's watch this video and then we'll come back and I'll discuss it with you. Y'all watch this, come back and I'll discuss it and then we'll talk about it. Okay. Either directly or indirectly, this is the message that I was raised with growing up. Uh, Y'all know me, Miss Aisha, licensed therapist, 100% Gen X, Trent, New Jersey. I was raised with the narrative that life is harder for black men, that they face discrimination that me as a black woman, I don't face, that they are denied jobs, they are denied access to resources, they are denied loans, they are denied opportunities that I have as a black woman because I'm not as, I'm not seen as threatening, right? And because of that, I need to lower the standard and lower the bar because I have to keep that reality of racism and discrimination in mind when I'm thinking about black men. That's the message that I received. I'm only speaking for myself. Y'all let me know if you received that same message growing up. I co-sign everything she said, go follow her. For a lot of black women, this is definitely the narrative that we were fed growing up. It's hard out there for a black man. Make sure you care for your black man. Fix his plate first. Give him the big piece of chicken because life is hard. Don't call the police on a black man. Don't snitch on a black man. You gotta protect the black man. But how many of us grew up knowing that actually the world is harder for us? And we're the most disrespected demographic people in the world, black women. And even more so, we learned that black men were a part of the disrespecting of us. I'll never forget back when I was married to my abusive ex-husband, he had choked me and I called the police on him. And I remember his mom yelling at me saying, you never call the police on a black man. Now here's the thing. Um, that black man knew he was black when he was committing the crime against you. Oh, so now you mistreat me and now I'm supposed to consider you and all the stuff you go through? We risk getting arrested and hurt to protest for violence against black men. But as soon as one of us is violated or hurt, I wonder what she did to deserve it. Well, I heard that she was lying about it. I heard that it was a skit. I heard she was kind of egging him on and taunting and teasing him. She was lying. She probably did something to deserve it. Who's standing up for and, and putting together a, a protest for us? Black women, we do the work. We put the committees together at the time and the places and we do all these protests. And then when it's us who needs the, the support and the help, we're met with questions and skepticism and don't get me wrong you can love whomever you want to love whatever race sex religion whoever you want to love but a lot of these black men are preferring to date other races because of this assumption that they are more submissive and somehow better than we are statistically i think that from what i've seen black men who marry interracially have the highest divorce rate out of all interracial mixes. A lot of these white women are not submissive and they will divorce your ass. And a lot of these foreign women, once they get their citizenship or run you dry of all your money, they will also leave your ass. Or once they see you're a bum, they'll leave your ass too. And there's this, there's this misconception that black women are, aren't submissive. And a lot of us are unfortunately to our detriment as we look at the numbers of statistics of domestic abuse and <clears throat> us getting murdered. We're higher than any other race in those statistics, including the statistic of contracting HIV. In my lifetime, and even me at one point, I have seen black women just give and give and give and give until they are a hollow shell of a person, until they have nothing left, and then they will get back up and give some more. Back in the slave days, us black women were the caretakers of the master's children. We were getting raped and abused by the masters and by the master's wives and by their children, and we were expected to get up and still take care of everything. Nothing has changed. Now, when black women divest 
and date other races? Why do you think people gaslight us into thinking that we're no longer pro-black and we don't like ourselves and we are running away from our race and we're not proud to be black because they know the truth that they have failed us. And now we are waking up to the fact that, hey, you know what? I'm going to go where the love is for me. I'm going to go where I'm respected and appreciated and seen. And Billy over here seems to be making the cut. And you know who has the lowest divorce rate? Black women and white men. We have the lowest divorce rate when it comes to interracial couples because we got the juice, y'all. If black men were smart, they would see the power within us. They would see that we were the blueprint and we could join forces and really change things for the better. But there is so much division in this community. It is unfortunate. And as soon as we say, hey, this is what's going on. These are the issues that we as black women are having. We're getting told we're starting a war. I'm sorry. Well, I'm just standing up for myself and for my sisters and what's right. It's not a war if I am the one being victimized and I am asking you to stop doing it. That's called accountability. But accountability feels like an attack for people who are too stupid to lean into it and to grow and do better. I posted a video not too long ago of a compilation of women getting married and their grooms are smashing, smashing cakes into their faces. I really didn't catch the fact that it was all white people. And black women are like, did y'all notice what they all have in common? It wouldn't be us. Black women don't put up with that shit. And you know what? Hey, I totally get it. We're not gonna get cake smashed in our faces. Our family's not gonna allow that shit. But statistics say that we're getting abused the most. We're getting cheated on the most. We're contracting HIV the most. So sure, make fun of her because her man smashed cake in her face, sure. But there's other shit that we're putting up with that we should not from these black men because we want black love. Because to me, from what I have seen, this whole idea of black love is just get with a black man, any black man, and put up with whatever shit that he is giving to you. Just put up with it for the sake of saying black love and producing more black children and strengthening our community. I'm supposed to give you the big piece of chicken and bow down to you because the world is hard for you? Bitch, every time I scroll through social media, there's a black man talking shit about us. When black women go to work, if we're not tap dancing around like Mr. Bojangles, people think we have an attitude. If we set any kind of boundary, people think we're being aggressive. No. I want to be with someone where I can come home and rest and not constantly have this expectation that if I'm not licking their butt crack, something is wrong with me. Black women deserve respect and equity. We should be walking around like we have crowns on our head. As a matter of fact, I got a crown back there that I put on all the time to remind myself of who I am. If you disrespect me, I'm calling the police on your ass. You put me in danger, I'm snitching, I'm telling every fucking thing. And if you don't want me, I don't want you either. So there you have it, my diamonds. You know what? I'm going on Amazon as soon as I finish this video. And I'm going to get me a crown. <laughs> I'm going to get me a crown. I don't really need that constant reminder. But I do want the idea of me making some videos and I have a crown on my head. Yeah, yeah. As a constant reminder to all of my queens out there. And I consider you to be a queen anytime you put your trust in Jesus Christ and Jesus is your husband and you're not putting your trust in any of these shallow, superficial, and fickle men. Anytime you feel that your life is not worth living unless you have a man, in my opinion, you're not really a true queen. You're a wannabe queen. Now, in terms of a lot of the points that she made, I love her. I love her video. I love her channel. You know, her name is Jolice Lowell. And check out her videos. She has another one called Life is Hard, Marriage, 
should not be. And I agree with that 100%, but marriage is like way too much work. And you put all of this work into it and it's never appreciated. It never really is. Anyway, I, um, I agree with her when she said, you know, you have a lot of these black men who they turn their back on their own race and their own nation of women to go glorify, uplift, build up and elevate other men's nation, other men's Caucasian men, his semen. You know, what is a man's semen? That's the, the, his seed. His seed is his nation. So you rather take care of another man's nation and race of women instead of your own because you feel that they're so much better than the, your own nation of women. You feel that they're more submissive, that they ebony women are not submissive. Now, and I know that's a damn lie. I'm getting ready to get radical now. My roommate was African. She is the most beautiful woman. I've One of the most beautiful women I've ever encountered. These They are raised to be submissive. African women, my brother is <clears throat> um, with an African female. They are the most hardworking, the most diligent, the most sub submissive women you will ever come across. They're so submissive to a point where I can't even stomach it. I, I just can't. So when these men are going around telling that lie that black women are hard and black women, no, they're not. The thing is you have a lot of these black men who suffer from colorism and because she don't have light or pale skin, that's where the truth, that's where the issue lies. But will they ever tell the truth about that? No, it has nothing to do with ebony women are not willing to be team players or follow a man's lead. But the thing is, we're not going to follow your lead. Who the hell are you following? Are you following Christ? Uh, never. No. You have women. <clears throat> One woman said, you know, she works in a factory, right? She works very hard, like 40 hours, 45 hours a week. And when she gets her paycheck, her husband tells her to hand over her paycheck to him. So he gets to manage all of her money. And for all of you women who say, that you don't mind being, I want to be married. I want to be married. Well, honey, a part of being married, if that man tells you to hand over your paycheck, guess what? If you're going to be a Christian wife, you better be submissive and hand him your hard earned money. God knows what he'll do with it. Probably spending it on his side piece and strippers and sex workers. But so what? That's your husband. So you better bow down and submit. Now hand over your paycheck. Yeah. How about that? So of course he's going to say, oh no, I had to leave her because she's not submissive. When I told her to hand over her hard earned money, she didn't want to do it. She's not a submissive wife. Child, please. Like I said, I choose staying single. And then you have women here. When you look at Kendra G, they're always talking about, I want a black man. I want a black man. And that bothers me because... Instead of them saying, I want a good man, I want a good man. They have to focus on a black man, which good luck with that, trying to find a good one. That's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Good luck. I'm not saying they're not out there, but like I said, uh -huh, good luck with that one. Now, when it says that when you're speaking up and you're standing up for yourself, you're seeing that as trying to be argumentative or creating a war, since when am I being argumentative because I decide to stand up for myself and speak up for myself so that you can take accountability for your behavior? You see what I'm saying? How they try to gaslight you? <clears throat> but ladies, don't fall for it. <clears throat> don't fall for it. Excuse me. Let me share this uh, video with you now with... Um, Joel's Lowell. I haven't seen it yet, so I'm going to see it for the first time with you. Okay, here we go, guys. Morning. I am Mr. Magoo, and this is the only way I can see the screen perfectly. But anyway, I want you guys to watch this video and then come back and I'll talk about it so we can all discuss it together. I said what I said. I'd rather be famous instead. I let. This makes so much sense. And 
if you look at it, let's dissect this. Let's unpack this. Let's put the suitcase on the bed and take out the shirts and everything so we can look at what's going on here. In the older generations, I put the black ones on. Do y'all like the black ones better? In the older generations and even still now today, people get married because maybe uh, they had sex and they got pregnant and they want to do the right thing for religious reasons or because of the pressure of their family once they found out. People get married because they want to have sex. So again, for religious reasons or personal reasons or whatever. This this one's more so back in the old days. Families were poor, so they would marry off their child because they couldn't afford to feed them. In some countries, that probably still happens. There's no doubt in my mind. People get married for societal pressure. They're family is like, when are you going to give us a grandchild? When are you going to settle down? Maybe they're the last single person in their friend group. Maybe there's this imaginary biological clock that is ticking. The biological clock does not exist. It was made up by an old white man in a newspaper article many years ago to devalue women the older they get. People get married out of desperation because they think, well, I really don't like this particular guy. He's not that great, but I, nobody might ever date me again. So I need to jump on this train and be with this guy. People settle. People get married because they're having a troubled life at home. And they think that getting married to this loser will be their way out of their home. A plethora of reasons that have nothing to do with actual love and making a rational decision about whether to hitch your wagon to somebody else's. Only about 35% of marriages are happy ones. And you might be thinking, well, Jules, it sounds like a small number, but it's actually a big number. Okay. Let's break it down this way. If you want to buy a car and you go to a used car lot and the salesman says, hey, this is a really good car, but it's only going to work about 35% of the time. Would you buy that car? You'd be an idiot if you would actually buy it unless you're buying it for parts or something like that. If you want to buy a house and you go to a realtor and the realtor says, hey, this house is only going to be functional and the appliances are only going to work about 35% of the time. Would you actually buy that house? If you go to book tickets to fly somewhere and there's a disclaimer on the screen and it says, hey, there's a 35% chance that this plane will actually make it to its destination. Would you buy those tickets? See, when you think about it like that, it's a definite no. But for some reason, because it's marriage, all of our caution is thrown to the wind. So to the person's point whose video I included, I think a lot of people because of the fact that they got married for not so good reasons, they are now fighting tooth and nail to make this thing work. When in most cases, it's not working because y'all should not have gotten together in the first place. I get it. You're going to get on each other's nerves sometimes. Um, they might snore or it might be a day when you just want to be left alone and they want to cuddle. Um, normal little annoyances that go along with being a human being and live with someone. But a lot of people are like knocked that knock down, drag out fighting. And it's just like, because you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole, you're trying to mix oil and water. You built the foundation on quicksand in the first place. Well, maybe you have normal problems, like maybe y'all's sex life has, you know, ebbs and flows, ups and downs. That's a normal issue that you guys should talk through, but it shouldn't be you cheated on me. I don't think I've ever met a person who described marriage as hard, who once they actually broke it down, they had a marriage that I would even sign up for in the first place. If hard is abuse and cheating or substance abuse or putting me in dangerous situations, that means divorce. And quite honestly, a lot of people who say marriage is hard, but we stuck together and we worked it out. What that actually means is the woman gave up because that man wasn't going to change. He got too old to abuse her or he got too old 
to cheat. He had to finally go sit down somewhere because y'all y'all know these men don't be taking care of themselves. And they both just gave up and just started exist existing together. And then from the outside looking in, we're like, oh, they stayed together for 20, 30, 50 years when in actuality, they're both fucking miserable. They both settled. They both should have divorced each other and moved the hell on. If you're going through one of the aforementioned hard times, abuse, cheating, lies, um, they're abusing a sus substance, anything like that, and you're trying to work it out, I just want you to be honest with yourself. Just come here for a second. Come here. Come here. I want you to ask yourself, why do I even have to be married? Look at She made some very, very valid points right there. The last part, why do I even have to be married? You know, a lot of people feel that they want somebody to share their life with. Get a roommate. You know, things are a little expensive. Get a roommate. I've always had a roommate helping me out. This is like the first time I don't have a roommate, but I rent out my other room for Airbnb for a friend of mine when she comes up here like every two weeks, you know, so she don't have to make that three or four hour commute when she goes to work up here, upstate New York. So she gives me $75 a day, a night. And that's nice. You know, that helps me pay at least what, four of my bills. You know what I'm saying? I have my telephone bill paid. She, the money she gives me, it pays my utility bill. It takes care of my Wi-Fi and my bus card. So I got four of my bills paid and all I mainly have to focus on is paying my rent. Pretty much. You know, somebody give you $100 a week, that's paying you, come on. So she's giving me uh, $300, um, $600 a month. You know, and that helps out a lot. No, no, I meant um, uh, $300 a month. And that takes care of four of my bills. Just like I said, if a woman has a dude who is, you know, a lot of men are lonely. If he's willing to give you $100 a week, that's $400 a month. That takes care of your Wi-Fi, your telephone bill, your utility bill, and your transportation. Whether you have a car or you take the bus. So that's four bills that's knocked out. But like I said, you know, and then I, I, I want the lifestyle of the Delaney sisters. They live to be 104 and 109 years old. And I read their book and I saw how they managed to do it. And they live such happy, fulfilling, joyful lives. No stress, no putting up with aggravation. And like I said, I'll never, ever forget what 1 Corinthians 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8, 28, 38, and verse 40, it says, my advice for the unmarried and for the widows. So for her to be a widow, she have had to have gotten married. And I'm sure now that she's out of it, thank God she's out of it. Recognize a blessing when you have one. He says, my advice for the unmarried and for the widows is that it is acceptable for them to remain single just as I am. It isn't wrong to marry. He's not saying it's wrong to marry. Even if you have never been married before. But check out what the Apostle Paul said. But those who marry, this is the important part. Hear me out. Will have a lot of trouble. And I want to protect you from this. Verse 38 says, those who marry will do okay. But those who remain single will do better. Now, who rather who wants to do okay when you can do better? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I keep that scripture focused right at the front of my brain when I look at these couples and I look at people who are trying to gaslight single people and try to make them feel like there's something wrong with you because you don't want to sign up to be incarcerated with a ball and chain and you choose peace tranquility, joy, independence, and freedom over drama, chaos, stress, pain, misery, and suffering. I, I, no, I don't want that. I'm not into, I'm not an s and person. And if you know anything about s and that's sadistic masochism. People who love pain. They either like giving pain or inflicting pain on the other. I'm not into that. I am not an s and freak. So when it comes to all of this marriage nonsense, like I said, no, I don't see the point and I don't see what I'm missing out on when it comes to staying single. 
because from what I could see, all you do when you're married is uh, you, you, there's a whole lot of unpaid labor and it's never appreciated. You become this domestic slave or servant with the cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and think about all the emotional labor. And if he wants children, now you got childcare on your hand. It's just too much work. And it would be a different story if they appreciated it and they treated you like a queen. I don't want nobody treating me like a princess because I'm not a child. I want to be treated like a queen, sweetheart. Yeah, that's right. I'm going to get my crown. Yeah, I got to look it up. Anyway, I wanted to share this with you. No, there's nothing wrong with you because you choose to be happy. You choose freedom over a ball and chain and being incarcerated. Someone telling you what you can do, what you can't do, where you're going, when you're coming back. No, you can't wear that. Oh, no, sweetheart. It, that's just too much for Sheila True Love. Now, for some people, that sits well with them. I don't know what their mental problem or their emotional issues are, but uh, no. I'm not signing on for that, and I don't think, especially not this day and age. Have you seen the type of dudes that are out here today? Are you serious? To that, I say, no, thank you. Diamond Diamonds.